She seemed exhausted. Got you a kitchen and a stroller, so you can be ready when you give up on your dreams. Hello friends, and welcome back to Red X, your source for the freshest daily Reddit content anywhere on the internet. Promise, swearsies. It's just a fact, probably. <laughs> Today we are jumping back into some r slash neckbeard stories. The holidays are over, people are posting again. I am so excited. I was thinking about doing like some other subreddits and stuff like that, but as long as there is content posted on neckbeard stories or tales of neckbeards, I'm going to be here to read it. I had a few comments that are like, neckbeard stories are the best thing ever. Why would you do anything else? And I tend to agree. The only reason I would do anything else would be either for contingencies when people aren't posting stories as much or for expansion to grow the channel even faster, of course. But that's just a little glimpse into my brain. <laughs> now let's have a glimpse into the brains of some neckbeards, tiny though they may be. <laughs> Without any further delay, we got four stories, so let's go ahead and jump right into it. Neckbeard threatens to cause a scene over Arnold Palmer's, leaves a 10% tip after being catered to the whole night. Edit, the title should have been less than 10%, not more than 10%. I guess that's what I get for trying to shorten things, la mau. <laughs> American school system at work, eh? <laughs> no shade, though. Okay, so I created this account a long time ago to find a seafaring D&D campaign. Couldn't find one. Rip. And I promptly forgot about it. That was until after binge-watching some neckbeard Reddit videos on YouTube and experiencing some neckbearded behavior for myself. Yay? <laughs> Anyways, now I'm here, having remembered this account, and I'm ready to tell my oh-so-lovely neckbeard story. So, disclaimer, I live in Florida, and as such, as per the governor's rulings, restaurants have remained open for most of the pandemic, mine included. Despite my northern blood and Yankee sensibilities, we're also at 100% seating capacity with no required social distancing when this story has been posted. It's been that way for a hot minute. Personally, I'm not too fond of it, especially since my restaurant is smack dab in the middle of a retiree county. Still, I'm a college student who pays tuition out of pocket, and if people are willing to risk their health and the health of others for a semi-okay overpriced burger, <laughs> well, there's not much I can do about that. Starting off on a somber note. <laughs> the cast, OP, that's me. The hostess at the American Cuisine restaurant that this tale is set at, who was just trying to start her closing chores so that she could go home. Palmer Beard, the neckbeard of our tale. It doesn't look entirely like the neckbeard type, but... It's the beard on the inside that counts. Hey, she said it. I'm going to put it on a t-shirt. <laughs> Named after Arnold Palmer's. It will be relevant later. And Peaches, the waitress slash victim of this tale. Named after her overall peachy demeanor. Peachy. Nice to everyone and rarely has a bad word to say about people. To put it in perspective, she once bought a very expensive spa day kit set for a coworker that she had been fighting with just because it was their birthday. Aw, oh, peachy, forgive and forget. Now, prepare yourselves, and let's begin the story. This all started on a relatively normal night for our restaurant. It was dark out, probably around 7 o'clock, and things had been slowing down. More people were leaving than were coming in, and as the only hostess on, this meant that it was a good idea to start the early outs, chores that would normally be done by another host before they left, but alas, there was none, so these jobs fell to me. I had grabbed the keys to the paper towels just before they arrived, Neckbeard and Co., forcing me to push my plans until after they got seated. Stuffing the key into my back pocket, I looked up and got a head count. There were five people, technically four and a half as far as the menu was concerned, that had walked in. The first two that came in seemed to be a young gay couple holding hands. The shorter one was fairly pale and lanky with clean-cut hair and a simple outfit. His presumed boyfriend was a few inches taller on the chubby side, with wild dark hair and a beard. Not a neck beard by any means, but a mid-stage Santa beard, if that makes sense. His fashion sense was simple, just like the first boy, but with a bit of a nerdier edge. Hey, I don't judge. I'm a nerd myself. They were either around my age, early 20s, or maybe even potentially teenagers. That determination honestly depended on if the bearded one just looked older than his own age, or if the lankier one simply had a baby face like me. I didn't wonder about it too much though, as neither of them really acknowledged me when I greeted them, only shuffled off to the side to wait for the rest of their party. 
Following them was a woman in her late 20s to early 30s who was carrying the half, i.e. the toddler, of their party on one hip and a booster seat in the other. She seemed exhausted, giving me a quiet, Hello, table for five, before taking a break to sit down. Got you a kitchen and a stroller, so you can be ready when you give up on your dreams. She was on the larger side, but frankly I tend not to judge mothers on their weight because baby weight can be a major insecurity source. I was about to answer her when the neckbeard of our story arrived, Palmer Beard. Like I said in the cast list, he wasn't the typical neckbeard. He was large, yes, in fact, he was the largest of the group and appeared to be the older brother of sorts to the larger boy that came in. He seemed too young to be the boy's father, but they were very obviously related. He looked like a larger, more bearded version of the boy that came in. Dark, wild hair with a fluffy, dark beard. Fluffy being the important word. Yes, he and the rest of his family, the woman and child, turned out to be his wife and daughter. They were on the larger side with him, indeed larger than most, but other than that, there was nothing really outwardly offensive about their appearance, or body odor. After all, this was the South, and I recently came to learn after moving down here from the Yankee lands, Ohio, that people here on average just seemed bigger. I don't know if it's a consistent South versus North thing or just a characteristic of this particular area. Still, the people, specifically Southern locals, not the Northern-born retirees, were just bigger. I don't know, man. I've seen some pretty big people from Ohio, but uh, <laughs> I guess generally speaking, yeah, Southern people are bigger. It's all that comfort food, dang oh. Even when he talked, he didn't give off any neckbeard vibes. The moment he came in, he greeted me with a warm, Merry Christmas! Christmas had already passed, but people still made a point to say it, as they do. Followed by, Table for five, please! He was confident, cheery, and charismatic, easily overshadowing the tired mother and the introverted couple with his more radiant energy. After a moment or two, they were sat down, given a server, peaches, and promptly were forgotten about. As a hostess, I typically didn't interact with customers past greeting them at the door and telling them to have a great day when they left. If I did interact with them, it was usually because we were swamped and the servers were asking me to run food or take a drink order or two. Otherwise, I just spent most of my time cleaning tables. We have no busboys at my restaurant, so the hosts bus. Dang, what a cost-saving device. <laughs> I'll make a note of it. I ain't got a pencil. I also keep up with the bathroom and just watch to make sure there aren't any unhappy guests that I need to send a server to. This particular night was no different, and at least from a distance, when I glanced at their table to make sure they weren't unhappy or swiveling their heads to find a server, they seemed pretty happy. The mother was still tired as she spent a good chunk of her time with the toddler, i.e. going to the bathroom or taking a break outside with her, but everyone else seemed to be fairly happy, calm, and just generally pleasant. Oh, how wrong I was. About half an hour after I'd sat him down, the night had crawled to a near halt. At this point, there were only a handful of tables, maybe four or five left, including the neckbeard, left in the dining room, and the last table to walk in was, well, the neckbeards. So I did my usual walk around to find a server and feel for the night. Typically, this went with me asking how the night went for the server in terms of tips. If people tipped well, I'd talk to the managers about cutting people from the floor without much interference. And still, if the tips were bad, I'd also talk to the managers about cutting the people who had gotten the most tips, usually the people who came in first. So the people with the least could at least get a chance to get some last minute stragglers and make up the difference. Before the pandemic had really hit, our sister restaurant about an hour away had closed down permanently. As a result, we had a couple of servers who now traveled an hour to work at our restaurant since no one else was really hiring. Sure, if they stayed later, they might only make a few extra bucks. Servers get paid about four something an hour under Florida minimum wage laws instead of the 845. But if I could cover gas money and help them keep more of their money, I mean, it was worth it. As you might expect, the report I got was not the usual one. Instead of the typical good-bad response, the server I had asked basically said, I don't know how much that table, the neckbeard table, is going to give in tips, but it's not worth it after what they put peaches through. My interest was piqued. What do you mean? Ugh, they just, it's just, you should ask her. This, of course, is paraphrasing, but... It's not typical for tables to leave my servers speechless, so her reaction remains pretty prominent in my memory. Fortunately for me, Peaches was back in the expo, the place where the servers get the drinks and food for the table. She was getting some drinks for another table, and was fairly easy to intercept. 
After asking her what was up with the neckbeard table, the seemingly pleasant table with a charismatic leader, what she told me is burned into my memory as one of the worst possible customer stories that a server has ever told me. And we once had a table refuse to work with their server because they wanted an American. He was Puerto Rican. So here it goes. After I set the table down, Peaches comes up to them, silverware in hand, ready to make a good impression. She's got a nice smile, a warm aura, and a pep in her step as she goes to greet this new table. Hi, my name's Peaches, and I... Palmer Beard then interrupts. If you don't give me four pictures of Arnold Palmer at this table, I'm going to cause a scene and start screaming in the middle of your restaurant. Why are you putting us through this? I wish I was kidding. I almost didn't believe her, but... I had one of the servers who had overheard him corroborate this story. I'm sure many of you are probably thinking, well, obviously you go up to the manager and talk to them about this trouble customer. And you're right, she did. She left the table, headed to the back office to talk to the manager about it. Unfortunately, the customer's always right. And even though we don't serve Arnold Palmer's, much less whole pitchers, he had the bartender mix up four pitchers of Arnold Palmer's for this table. The whole table managed to gulp down the four pitchers before their food even came out, prompting the server to go and get more. Too sweet. Okay, she goes and gets it remade. Not sweet enough. This goes on pretty much throughout the night, with Peaches running back and forth from their table to the bar to continuously get these Arnold Palmers redone to the table's liking, which, by the way, they drink the ones they don't like. Now Peaches remains as sweet as a peach to this table throughout all of this, trying to be as accommodating as possible, while well, the table keeps demanding more. <laughs> more. And by the table, I mean Palmer Beard specifically. The three other adults, or semi-adults at the table, don't really interact much with Peaches. Just quietly stand by as Palmer Beard berates Peaches for making awful Arnold Palmers. Despite him being told that this is coming out of the bar, i.e. from the bartender, and that we really don't have an Arnold Palmer mix or recipe to go off of. The bartender was just mixing our iced tea with her bar lemonade and hoping for the best. It's important to keep in mind that both the bartender and Peaches have other patrons to worry about throughout all of this. Our bartender is responsible for dealing with the late night to-go orders, and Peaches does have another table that she's supposed to be taking care of. Neither one of them have much opportunity to work with them though, as Palmer Beard and his table are knocking Arnold Palmer's back at a worrying pace throughout the night, each time demanding more and more refills of the pitchers. Eventually, though, they leave, and to no one's surprise, the table is an absolute mess. It didn't even seem like they actually ate the food, just spread it around the table and the floor, probably as a pastime between knocking back those Arnold Palmers. Normally, I wouldn't judge messy tables when there are children there. Kids are messy little shits, and I try not to judge parents for not controlling their children telepathically. Still, the majority of this mess didn't come from the kid. I don't think they even ordered anything for the toddler. They probably just brought their own food for her, which is pretty common. Nonetheless, it is an absolute bitch to have to clean up, and it took more than a little elbow grease to completely wipe the table from the sticky Arnold Palmer residue. God bless the recently enforced gloves that I have to wear while cleaning, because I can't imagine having to scrub that with just a warm towel in my bare hands. As for Peaches, well, Palmer Beard had rather charismatically declared that he would be paying for the whole thing as he had received, or would be receiving, his check from the government. And apparently, you're supposed to get more money from it if you have kids. I wouldn't know, as I don't have kids, but I didn't bother questioning it. He then leaves a less than 10% tip. Mind you, we have handheld machines that prompt the customer to pick an option for the tip. 10%, 15 20 and other. This adult man, who threatened to cause a scene over Arnold Palmer's, practically bled us dry of sweet tea in a span of 45 minutes to an hour, and had the server running back and forth the whole night, went out of his way to give his server, in the middle of a pandemic and economic crisis, a less than 10% tip. Personally, I hope this is my first and last time dealing with a neckbeard, but my love for nerdy things might end up betraying me. So, you know, fuck Palmer Beard. <laughs> I don't really know if this guy qualifies as a neckbeard. I mean, there was some entitlement, but even the, the hostess didn't seem to pick that up. She got a completely different impression than the actual waitress did. And Palmer Beard did end up drinking the Arnold Palmers, even if he decided that it was too sweet or whatever. How many pitchers could he have possibly drank in 45 minutes to an hour? I wonder. <laughs>
It definitely does suck that he left a less than 10% tip, but what sucks even more is the state of the restaurant industry where servers have to depend on tips to make a living. Personally, if I was the waiter and the guy threatened me, if you don't get four pictures of Arnold Palmer, I'm gonna start screaming, then I'd stand back and pull out my phone and be like, go ahead, dude. <laughs> I really wanna see this, please go ahead. You're not making me look bad, you're just making yourself look like an idiot. Go ahead, seriously, go ahead. <laughs> but yeah, obviously that, you know, got under her skin a little bit. She tries to talk to the manager and they're like, oh, the customer's always right. And I think I've made this point before, but the customer is always right does not necessarily mean that the actual customer is always right. It's supposed to be a statement about the free market that people will always buy what they enjoy. It's not, please mistreat me because I'm an employee of this establishment and you're a customer. Fuck that mindset and fuck managers who enforce it. Ugh. So yeah, my final judgment, probably not a neckbeard, just a regular old disgusting person. <laughs> not to get the two mixed up, but I still appreciate the post OP. However, we will be moving on into the next one. Roommates with Wheezy Beard. Young Wheezy, ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Hi there, people of Reddit. I have just joined, and I wanted to share my story with you all. I've been listening to a lot of neckbeard stories lately, so I've decided to share one that I was living through until I could save money and find somewhere else. A good eight months packed with tales of neckbeards. But first, a little background information. I'll call myself OP, and I stand at an intimidating five feet tall. And probably looks wise a 7 out of 10 on a good day. I have an abusive background, so I think that has made me quite the pushover. My New Year's resolution is to grow more of a backbone. The neckbeard of this story we'll call Wheezy Beard. There's also one other character in this story, which is my sister Angel. We call her Angel because she totally is one. This story begins when I had to leave my old house with my lovely roommates because the owner had to move back in. And so, desperate for a place to stay, I looked on flatmates.com and messaged as many as I could. I had an almost instant reply from an old lady's ad saying that I could come check out the house tomorrow and get the key then. It was cheaper than the last place and not too far from where I worked. Relieved, I immediately messaged back, thanking her and telling her that I'd be there around 11, if that worked for her. And she said, yes it does. Then I started packing up my old room and called my sister to ask her to help me move, and she said yes. She was only available to help the next day. She said she'd be there first thing and we'd get a nice breakfast after loading everything into her car. The next day, after an hour of moving everything, I hugged my old roommates goodbye and set out for my new place. Telling my sister how excited I was to be within walking distance to work and to have my old roommates over to my new place. Hopping back in the car after breakfast, I had 10 missed calls and 6 voice messages. And it wasn't even 10.20. This was the first time I'd heard my new roommate's voice. It was not an old lady. It was a very scratchy man's voice asking where I was. Sounding more and more cross with every voice message saying if I wasn't going to take their offer seriously to just F off. That if I'm not going to be reliable then this would not work out. I immediately called him back. After a few seconds he picked up and the conversation went as follows. OP, hi, this is OP. I'm so sorry, I was just having breakfast with my sister. We got all my stuff packed up and we're ready to... Wheezy Beard. I don't want to hear excuses. Just hurry up. I have plans today and if you aren't here in 10 minutes, you aren't moving in. Beep. Hello? Hello? I am panicking at this stage. I don't know anything about the man that I was going to be living with. I should have confirmed that I was living with this older lady. She made the listing, so I had assumed that it was going to be her. Long story short, it was Wheezy Beard's grandma's house, and she'd recently put an addition into the yard. I had a whole car full of my belongings. I didn't have the money for a moving van. My sister said for me to calm down, and that worst case scenario, I could stay at hers. I had no license, and she lived nowhere near public transport, so it wasn't ideal. Plus, there would also not be much space. We pulled up at the address with a few minutes to spare, and knocked on the door. A few minutes passed by. No answer. Knock again. Nothing. I decided to call this number and find out where he was. He answered the phone, telling me to go through the side gate. Weird request, but okay. My sister had 000, Australian police, typed into her phone, just in case. 
After walking around the side of the house, we saw a two-story granny flat. A very large man appeared, squeezing through a sliding glass door, red in the face and panting like he'd run a marathon. <sighs> About time! <sighs> he puffed. I immediately launched into how sorry I was, that I hoped we could put this behind us and be friends. He sort of stiffened up as we walked closer. This man stunk so bad. I doubted that he had ever had a shower. His hair was matted. He'd often hide it under his fedora. Yes, he had one. He was also wearing one of his many Marvel shirts. I think it was Iron Man. With his cargo shorts, socks, and Crocs. <laughs> socks and Crocs. As if he wasn't enough of a pussy repellent. My name's Wheezy Beard. I've had so many people visit, and I'm sick of showing them around, so... Are you interested or not? My sister and I were shocked at how blunt this whale of a man was. I thought about staying with my sister until I found a better place. Sometimes I wonder how differently things would have played out if I did. Without thinking, I squeaked out a, I'm interested. Taking that as a yes, with a half smile, he handed me a key and ushered us through the doorway. The smell hit us so hard and fast that we could hardly breathe. Like rotting food and cigarette smoke, the place was filthy, like an episode of Hoarders. I could see now why so many people were not interested, and why he met us in the garden. I could barely make out the orange carpet below us. It was covered in crumbs, clothes, bits of Lego, cigarette butts, you name it. Already sounding out of breath, Wheezybeard walked around us to start the tour. In the lounge room, I could see a fold-out lounge slash mattress hidden beneath so much stuff. Chip packets, empty energy drink cans filled with cigarettes, naughty magazines, and a very yellow body pillow with a naughty maid on it. TV blaring in front of his bed. Posters of many different anime girls were pinned to the walls, all doing that happy scream face. Ahigao? I think it's Ahigao. Nowhere was safe to look. My sister and I were very uncomfortable. And then taking our stares at his collection as interest, he said that his bed was free to my sister and I any time. No fucking way. <laughs> we just stood there, unsure what to do. And after a brief pause, seeing us not jumping to the offer, he continued down the shit show walkway to the kitchen, where everything was dusty, moldy, or downright putrid. Nothing had been washed up, and the floor was so sticky that you could audibly hear our shoes trying to detach from the floor. <laughs> Cobwebs everywhere, although not a spider to be seen. All the flies and warmth in the world were not worth staying here, apparently. This place could use a woman's touch, OP. <laughs> this guy was making my anxiety levels go through the roof at this point. But still, ultimately, it would be better than moving back in with my parents. Really though, honestly, ask yourself. <laughs> the bathroom looked barely used with an old towel that had streaks on it and what I hoped were beard hairs everywhere. No toothbrush anywhere to be seen and cigarette butts overflowing the ashtray near the sink. Finally, we got to my room. Safe to say, it did not look exactly like the pictures. There was a bit of furniture, a smashed TV and dust everywhere. But it wasn't nearly as bad as the rest of the house, thank God. <laughs> Wheezy Beard then cleared his throat. All right, ladies, uh, I'm going out while you organize the room. The TV needs to go out to the front for trash collection tomorrow. Don't be a stranger, Angel. <laughs> we figured we needed to go out anyways, so we carried the TV out to the bins, put everything on my new bedroom floor. We put down a tarp for my mattress and piled everything on top of it until we could clean the floor. We then went out to the shops to quickly buy some cleaning supplies and my own kitchenware. No way was I touching anything of his. This is where Angel had to leave me, and this is where I leave you guys for now. I have so much to fit in, and I would like to make multiple stories so I can go into detail if this is popular and liked. Thank you so much for staying and reading this. I wish you all the best for this new year. P.S. I give permission for any YouTubers to read this. I love Moon Horse, Red X, and Walter Fate. Hey, the big three! <laughs> And while they may not read this aloud, I want them to know how good it is to hear other people's experiences. And I promise more of Wheezybeard's neckbeardy behavior will show. Well, gosh, I didn't know I'd get the shout out in the end. That always feels good. <laughs> I thought about not reading this story at all since it was like basically just a wall of text. But 
It was a relatively well-written wall of text, <laughs> so I decided to power through. I think it was worth it. I definitely like to hear more about Wheezy Beard. You got eight months of experiences, and I got a whole channel to post those experiences on, so come on, OP. Let's do this thing together. I'm going to give you the old bookmark and uh, keep an eye on what you post in the future. The first interaction with him, calling on the phone, like blowing up your phone, and then acting like a dick when you called him back, that's like the biggest red flag of all. I probably wouldn't have proceeded past that point. I'm like, okay, I'll go live with my parents again. That's fine. Yes, it will hurt your pride a little bit, but God, that's better than destroying your lungs by breathing in the black mold that is surely infesting the walls of Wheezy Beard's house. Or cooking in the cockroach nest that is his kitchen. Ugh, <laughs> I hate it. Oh, it was a really good verbal description, though, of a neckbeard nest. We should probably visit that subreddit as well. I'm adding it to the list of contingency subreddits for when uh, neckbeard stories don't have that many new posts on them. There was so much content here, and we've only just barely scratched the surface. So I'm looking forward to continuing with you guys. 3,000 subscribers. Oh, my God. Thank you so much. Holy heck. This channel is just growing super fast, and I am so grateful, so excited. Who would have known that the world loves hearing about neckbeards and legbeards as much as I do, you know? And uh, one of the commenters, Whitney, made a good point that I'm basically the only one that consistently does neckbeard videos these days. So I guess I got to stick to it. But like I said, I do want to visit some other subreddits in case there's no new stories or just to expand my audience. But anyways, friends, I hope that you'll like, comment, and or subscribe if you did enjoy this episode. Maybe share it around with your family. I love hearing those comments. They're like, ah, I'm trying to get my brother hooked on Red X. I'm like, shit, yeah, dude. <laughs> Word of mouth means the world. I'd also appreciate if you check out the link swarm in the description. We got PayPal and Patreon if you want to donate monetarily. If you'd just like to reach out for me, hang out a little bit. We got Twitter, Facebook, Discord, my other channel, which does some gaming content every once in a great while. And of course, I would be remiss not to thank my patrons. Their numbers have dropped just a little bit, but hey, I get it. Christmas was hard on everybody, you know? Gone, but not forgotten. <laughs> Anyways, we've still got Crimson Albedo, Dot Nathan, Robert Waits, Just Austin, Rebecca H., Cider Drinker, Lady Nix, and Pope Squid. I definitely appreciate you guys. Obviously, if you'd like to throw some money my way, that is always massively appreciated. But if you can't right now, don't worry about it. I just appreciate you hanging out and spending a little bit of your day with me. And I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow. In order to do so, you need to keep yourself safe and healthy. Wash your hands as much as possible. And also, take some time out and do something that you personally enjoy today. Mental health is just as important as physical health. So please do one or all of the above. <laughs> because you are loved, you are worthy, and you definitely, definitely deserve it. I will see you again tomorrow, friends, and until then, bye-bye.